Chapter 11, Part 3, The Mysterious World of Neurology As was always customary while on the plane, I was creating goals to my future and reminiscing of the good times. This time, I knew exactly what I wanted out of life, remembering the career research paper that I wrote during my English class in my sophomore year of high school that I titled The Mysterious World of Neurology. And this is how it went. The human's brain secretly affects a person's life. It is the head organ of the central nervous system and the entire body. This brain performs such miracles that although it helps us learn and absorb information, it would never reveal to us the causes to the changes of its chemical and molecular composition that affect our daily reactions to life unless we take the initiative to study it. The brain is such a witty, independent, and conceited part of our body that distorts its secrets from us in our subconscious mind. Therefore, because the human brain is so mysterious, people in the 19th century found a way how to study their brain by analyzing different organisms with similar functioning brains as humans. This eventually opened up the gates to the study of neurology. Every person's brain, in my opinion, is different and unique. It reacts differently from person to person to the sociological environment, people to which the brain is exposed. However, the brain regulates our daily functions that are necessary to life, such as locomotion, thought processing, and response to heat, cold, and sound, all five senses, in the same scientific way that we are inherently unaware of unless studied. I've always wondered about a person's personality. How come a person's personality drastically differs from other people if every person has the same kind of brain? All humans in the entire world are homo sapiens and not the Neanderthal species that once became extinct since prehistoric times. We don't have such diversity in this case like other species amongst uh, each other that do, and as a result have anatomical and physical differences. Unlike them, we are all coming from the same species and yet are so different from one another. How is it possible? I've always been questioning myself these abstract questions that require probably years of studying and intense experimentation in order to find out the answers to my questions. I wonder about what happens biologically or chemically to our brain when we get frustrated, annoyed, or angry. In fact, what is the source of stimulation of these emotions? Are human emotions real? Do they really exist or is it just an illusion? These questions are swirling in my head time to time and I literally get lost in this world from having them unanswered. However, I've taken a remarkable course in Spring Valley High School that is called AP Biology. This course has covered the subject of the nervous system and gave me some basic answers to my questions, which has ignited my interest in the subject even more. Therefore, I finally found out my field of interest that I would want to pursue and investigate in depth, and it it is neurology. The study of neurology is closely associated with neurosurgery. I am considering neurosurgery too, but more leaning towards neurology. Neurology is a career that focuses on researching answers for obscure and complicated questions, which terribly fascinates me. I love the idea of laboratories, potions, teams, togetherness, and maybe explosions if wrong chemicals are mixed together. This, in my opinion, creates an atmosphere of drama, action, and some fantasy added in between. A neurologist can either create treatments to heal impairments or paralysis of the nervous system or and invent technological instruments that neurosurgeons would have to use at times of surgery. I would also like the idea of con- contributing knowledge to society, advancing the field of neurological science, and pro- possibly medicine in general, which doctors and, and physicians throughout the world would have to to take advantage of. Neurology, however, is not only restricted to understanding diseases of the nervous system and and creating inventions. Neurology is also about investigating the meaning of spirituality and how it is carried out in the brain.
For example, the magazine articles "Born to Believe" describes the experiment about what leads people to believe, which has been performed by neuroscientist Andy Newberg. Andy Newberg decided to experiment the concept of belief in different types of people, such as monks, Buddhists, Catholics, and atheists, to see and and analyze how the brain perceives belief in each of these different forms of beliefs. Through a brain scan, he depicted which part of the brain was activated at times of prayer, and then he compared the results of each of these individuals. This way, Andy was able to trace the path of belief formed by the brain, but not yet see the formation of belief itself. Therefore, to understand the most abstract things that a common person doesn't get to understand is so fascinating to me. This is why I'm excited about neurology. However, neurosurgery also inspires me because of the payoffs described in the magazine article that I found. The following quotes would explain the sacrifices and the demands to the career, but despite the hardships, it articulates the amazing outcomes coming out of this profession. On the flip side, the patient having his or her head examined probably feels better knowing that the guy wielding the knife put in twenty years for the privilege. But twenty years isn't that a bit much? Absolutely not," says Dr. Dion Lowes, FRCS, a practicing neurosurgeon since 1994. We need that kind of double Darwinian selection process, so only the strongest survive. You don't want the unskilled fiddling the pe-、uh, with the people's brains. So, what makes neurosurgery a dream job? The rewards are great. To make a diagnostic home run in this highly competitive arena is enormously self-validating. Finding that you've developed 24 carrot fingers performing a particular procedure over time is truly satisfying, and just imagine the life-changing results one can achieve with patients. The gratification of shaking the hand of of someone who was formerly paralyzed is incomparable,、uh, Doctor Dion Lau Dub explained. This excerpt clearly shows me how determined and stubborn a neurosurgeon would have to be in order to become a neurosurgeon. Competition, stress, endless education is definitely for me. Without it, I'm restless. I love、uh, learning fascinating things relating to the topic that I enjoy, and in fact, the education span that this career requires is not at all impossible for me. I think that twenty years would rush by quickly. However, the only conflict that I am having with this profession is that in order to be a neurosurgeon, the person has to be naturally calm and always trust oneself in whatever he/she is doing. Being calm and confident is typically what I am not. In other words, I'm quite a nervous type of person who is lacking some confidence. If I would find myself holding a needle in front of, an, of naked brain tissue and having my hands shake. Thus, creating a dreadful mistake and killing the person, I will never be able to bear the guilt for the rest of my life. If I would know in my heart of hearts that I am to blame, I would refuse to go through a court procedure or defend myself in any kind of way. I would simply confess my accidental malpractice and be ready to suffer the consequences. This would be a huge burden on my part. This is why I prefer neurology better, though maybe in the. Future life would educate me in such a way that would prepare me towards this challenge, which would help me to adapt to these requirements and expectations. Neurosurgeons typically work in a clean environment to avoid contamination, which is good for the workers' health. Unlike jobs such as the miner, most neurosurgeons are working full time, more than sixty hours a week. They must be prepared, depending on the circumstances, to travel from offices to hospitals or nursing homes, back and forth. Just like neuro- neurologists, they have to work as a team while performing an operation. However, unlike neurologists, they always have to be prepared for emergency calls, which could pop up spontaneously during a date party or simply deep at night while a person's asleep. Whatever neurosurgeons and neurologists do is absolutely fundamental to society. This is the reason why the annual salary is so high, ranging in between hundred six thousand to a hundred ninety nine seven o one. Dollars. If a neurosurgeon has been a dedicated employee for eight, seventeen years, depending on the hospital, in- income、uh, could be raised up to、uh, up all the way to six hundred thirty-five thousand, which means thirty-one hundred per day. 
However, to earn all this, a neurologist or a neurosurgeon has to give an enormous amount of sweat. First, a person with an interest in neurology has to go through a four-year undergraduate program. Undergraduate courses are typically very general, such as physics, biology, mathematics, English, and inorganic and organic chemistry. Some add to their curriculum humanities and social sciences to understand how medicine affects the economy, what kind of laws there are regarding medicine, and so on. After the completion of this program, a person is eligible to uh, officially enter another four years of medic medical school. School, which is a graduate program this time. In the medical school, that person is already privileged to study only his major of, uh, of interest, which would be neurology for me. Some schools, though, offer a, offer a combined undergraduate and medical school program in six years. After that, depending on the person's major, he or she has to go through an internship program for three, eight years where you physically work to acquire experience. Some prefer volunteer jobs and some work for low payments and are members of an organization. Altogether, it would take 14, 20 years. The minimum requirement for officially working as a neurosurgeon is at least 14 years of educational background. In order to be licensed, though, physicians must graduate from an approved school, pass a licensing examination, and complete one to seven years of graduate medical school. If physicians got licensed in uh, one state, usually they can be licensed in another without any examinations, which sounds like a very handy type of agreement. According to the book, The Haunting Memories of a Neurosurgeon, Mark Fl Flitter, the author of the book and an in and an inexperienced neurosurgeon has descriptively portrayed the emotional expense of being a neurosurgeon. It explains how a stranger neurosurgeon plays a huge role in people's lives and makes a difference. The book goes through individual stories and emphasizes one central theme, how needy people are desperately dependent on Flitter's 20 years of skills in order to survive. Although I didn't read the entire book, I only read the prefix of the book. I'm inspired to do all this work for a people who would need my help and expertise. I would truly enjoy experiencing this glamorous achievement, achievement of savings once, uh, saving one's life. If neurosurgery wouldn't work for me, I would still consider myself helpful as a neurologist because neurosurgeons will go nowhere without neurologists in the, in the background picture. The skills required for these careers are, first and foremost, the ability and desire to serve patients, which requires great social skills. The person has to be self-motivated, a self-starter, always be able to push oneself ahead of the game. A neurosurgeon has to be able to survive pressures and long hours of medical education. Any surgeon definitely has to be emotionally stable for this kind. kind of job to prevent mistakes and have the ability to make prompt decisions in times of emergencies. Additionally, neurosurgeons must be willing to study thro uh, throughout their career to keep up with medical advancements. In contrast, however, neurologists don't study as much as neurosurgeons throughout their career because neurologists are the ones that make medical advancements. Maybe, though, neurologists would have to study advancements done by different neurologists to utilize the improvements made, and thus think of better inventions. This way, the field of medicine would constantly grow and become updated as years go by. However, a person that studies neurosurgery doesn't get to open up skulls as soon as the person started working. There are positions assigned depending on the person's level of education. As a person goes up a level, uh, goes up a level educationally, that person is being promoted a position higher. During a surgery, one neurosurgeon, which technically does the actual surgery, doesn't work independently on its own. If that was the case, the neurosurgeon would have easily made a mistake and, and killed the person on which the surgery is done in an instant, regardless of how many years of experience he had had. Therefore, there are sub-nurses that are assigned to make a particular job. For example, one is giving the instruments needed for the head neurosurgeon. The other tells the neurosurgeon where and how a needle has to go through the brain. Another one watches the person's blood pressure. The other one watches the camera to see what, what is going on in the brain while the neurosurgeon is working on it, and so on. Thus, there are about 10 or more people working cooperatively on one surgery. 
I personally really like this teamwork. It reassures me that everything is done safely, which means that if there is one mistake done by a person, it could be prevented by the other as a backup. I'm sure that surgery is stressful to everyone and not only to be patient and not and not only to the patient. What greatly appeals to me is the sense of fulfillment in the end of it. As I explained the reasons why I would want to become a neurologist now, I have to get start started describing my college preferences. One of my preferences is the University of San Francisco in Nor Nor Northern California, and the other is the University of Chicago in Illinois. Both of these prestigious universities offer undergraduate and graduate programs. The requirements SAT score is at, th at 1,200, which can be higher today. To apply to the University of San Francisco, it requires an essay or personal statement, a high school transcript, a minimal GPA of 2.8, but the recommendation GPA is 3.0, and less than one letter of recommendation. However, the University of Chicago has a bit higher requirements. Instead of one letter of recommendation, there has to be three letters of recommendation. In this university, an appropriate GPA is not stated. Both universities, however, have a tennis team, which is good because I'm a tennis player. Full-time tuition at USF is $41,000, uh, uh, and full-time tuition at the University of Chicago is $44,000. The reason the tuition is higher in Chicago than in San Francisco is because the University of Chicago typically offers more majors than the University of San Francisco. Financial aid at the University of Chicago is not stated, but financial aid at the University of San Francisco is, is ranging from uh, 3400 to 2400 For my undergraduate program, however, for better clarification, I need the following courses. Anatomy, the first two years, biochemistry, physiology, pharmacology, psychology, microbiology, pathology, medical ethics, and laws governing medicine. Psychology is important because understanding the emotional and so sociological conditions of a pa patient is closely associated to neurology. However, the reason I need to study social sciences is to understand the economic effect of medicine. Theology and religious vocations that I, I need for understanding the religious disputes against science advancements. Therefore, this means that some universities are on target for me, but some are not. For example, the University of San Francisco offers many social sciences, science courses, business-based courses, but not many of those sciences, science courses that I need for my major. However, the University of Chicago offers what I typically need for my undergraduate program. It has courses such as mathematics, statistics, psychology, physical sciences, and so on. Finally, when I'm finished with my college years and am eligible to have a job that is appropriate to my career, I have to look for job opportunities. Therefore, I have found two options uh, of jobs, which is either as a neurologist or a neurosur neurosurgeon. There's one opportunity to work in Northern California as a neurosurgeon in Sacramento, San Francisco, or Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is a Northern California suburban location. Everything is around. Places such as shopping centers are nearby my would-be working place place if I would ever decide to work there. Besides, I love suburban locations. I'm not so comfortable with cities. Another location is in Boston.